Hello! I am here today to talk to you about childhood trauma and the impact that it has on our adopted children, as well as the impact that it has on you and I as parents to our adopted children. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brooke Fremo. I am an adoptive mother to 11 beautiful children and a certified trauma support specialist. I love helping moms of adoptive children to be able to calm the chaos in their hearts and in their homes. So with that being said, today I'm going to present to you two ways in which trauma is impacted onto a person and how that perpetuates a cycle within a person and oftentimes within a family unit. And in the comments section, I'm going to have a link. Um, it's actually in the details here on YouTube. So look down there. There's a link for you today to be able to log in and get a free strategy call with me to be able to discuss what it is that you're seeing in your home. What trauma behaviors do you have presenting from your adopted child? And let's see if we can work together to help dial down those behaviors and bring peace back into the heart and into the home environment, okay? So with that being said, let's dive into the meat and potatoes. We're gonna talk about trauma 101 right here, guys. So what is trauma? Trauma is something that impacts a person on a level in which it changes them long term for the negative, right? So a lot of people think of trauma as uh, I was molested. The molestation isn't the trauma. The thing that causes the hurt is never the trauma. The trauma itself is the change, the physiological change that takes place in the person that was victimized, okay? So with that, let's look at two primary types of trauma. There is primary and there is secondary, okay? The first primary trauma is a direct form of trauma. So let's use an example like little Johnny, for example. Let's say he's a three-year-old that came through a foster to adopt situation to an adoptive mom, okay? So little Johnny, he is living with a biological mother who has a boyfriend. And little Johnny uh, doesn't have food in the house very often. Food stamps are exchanged for drugs, so he doesn't get consistent food. Uh, little Johnny is around a lot of drug abuse, so his schedule's really wonky, right? He's up at night, uh, sleeps during the day, kind of crashes uh, in the comfort of his mom's arms when his mom is basically passed out and unconscious, right? But that's his safe space is when she's unconscious because when she's awake, that's when things are crazy, and she invites unsafe people into the house or leaves the house unlocked, and unsafe people come in to take what it is that they want, right? It might be an atmosphere with violence, and perhaps there's a boyfriend figure that uh, sometimes comes and goes. Little Johnny's mom may take him to Circle K and stick candy bars in her pocket, and that might be the meal that her and little Johnny eat later on throughout the day. You can imagine that little Johnny doesn't feel safe very often. You can imagine that little Johnny doesn't recognize that love equals safety, that the two don't necessarily go hand in hand, okay? So in this example, what would the primary trauma be? It's the direct trauma that comes to little Johnny. So the primary or direct trauma would be maybe the mom that slaps him when he's being too loud and disruptive. Maybe the primary trauma is the starvation, right? That this little guy like scales the pantry to find anything and everything that he can find. Primary trauma, people bust into the house and those people put Johnny up against the wall because they don't want him around. He's annoying and he could touch things that he shouldn't touch, right? Okay, secondary trauma. Secondary trauma is the indirect trauma that comes to little Johnny. Secondary trauma is going to look like this. So little Johnny goes to Circle K with his mom, and they get caught stealing. Little Johnny doesn't understand that what they're doing is really that wrong. And the police come. Mom gets hysterical. The police have to force her into cuffs and literally drag her away while calling CPS to come and take custody of little Johnny. Little Johnny feels like a secondary victim from the police department. Mom's always told him that the police weren't safe, and now he witnessed for himself the police putting his hands on his mother and making his mom scream. 
he was secondarily victimized by the police. Little Johnny, in the middle of the uh, night, sometimes would fall asleep and wake up to loud noises. People busting into his house. Those people would slap mom around. And mom would scream and cry and beg for her life. Little Johnny feared as much for his mom's life as he ever feared for his own. Little Johnny worried for his mom when he woke up in the middle of the night and the apartment was empty. He was afraid that somebody had taken his mom off and beaten her and that maybe she wasn't going to come back. Johnny, little Johnny, was a victim of his mom's abusers. Not just his abusers, but his mom's abusers. The pain, the fear that little Johnny felt when people would break in and hurt his mother traumatized him and made him worry for the safety of somebody he loved, somebody that he counted on. And even though you and I know he couldn't really count on mom, he never had anything to compare it to. He didn't know that. Now little Johnny comes into our home. He comes into your home as an adoptive placement. Little Johnny sees police. He screams and shouts and starts pounding on the car windows. You're hysterical because you're just trying to drive and you realize like this kid is going to scale right out of his car seat and it's not safe for anybody in the car. Little Johnny has victimized you because little Johnny and his trauma came out as rage and fear in the car. Little Johnny, he hears loud noises and he starts screaming and covering his ears. Little Johnny is out of control and you don't know what to do about it. You're frustrated. You're scared. You're angry. Little Johnny, he's only seen people deal with their hurts and frustrations through physical violence. So guess what little Johnny does to your kids? Little Johnny, when he wants something, he walks up to them and punches them in the face and takes what he wants. Little Johnny is abusing the kids that you never thought would be abused. The kids under your care, your loving arms. You are terrified for what it means to the health and safety of your household. Little Johnny is a primary victimizer for the kids in your house. Guess what else? Not only are you a primary victim and your children a primary victim of Little Johnny, you guys are secondary victims too. You see... How many people do you know that have a child that has fetal alcohol syndrome or in utero drug exposure? And the parents that adopted little Johnny have a lot of feelings about that birth mom and what she did to little Johnny or what she didn't do to little Johnny. See, we love little Johnny. We want to protect him. And even though we can't, we are upset that we couldn't. We are upset that a person would ever do to little Johnny what was done to him. He didn't deserve it. It isn't right. And he's going to pay the price for it for the rest of his life. We are secondary victims on behalf of our son. Guess what we do with the trauma that we experience? Not unlike Johnny, we have frustration. We have fear. Are our kids going to be okay? Are we equipped to handle all that this kid has? Is he going to be functional when he grows up? Is there any help that's really going to help this child? Because everything that subsidy has been throwing at me is not working. And all of those things turn into a lack of compassion and parenting. Maybe too harsh of discipline or consequences. Maybe anger, loud voices, yelling. What does it look like for your children? who've had their toys taken away and their teeth bopped out. Yeah, they probably didn't take it very well either, right? So here's the thing we have to consider as moms. When we open up our hearts to let a child into our home and our child opens up and allows us to love them in the ways that they can receive that love, that's a process in its own, a whole nother video. But when they do that, they also open up their trauma. And their trauma becomes our trauma. And then our trauma becomes their trauma. And now we're primary victimizers onto our own child. 
that we never intended to victimize, right? With our lack of patience and us not dealing with the victimization that came into our household through little Johnny. So here's the thing. When we walk into love with our child, we also have to walk into the trauma. And trying to heal little Johnny's trauma without taking an honest look at the trauma that we have from bringing little Johnny and his trauma into our hearts and homes is never going to work. It doesn't work. And I'm telling you this because I've walked through this, not once, not twice, but 11 times, 11 adopted kids. And it wasn't something that came overnight, right? But this is a journey that you have to embrace with your child, not for your child. All right, so let's recap this. What is trauma? It isn't the actual incident that happened. It is the response to the incident. Some people can experience really horrific incidents but not have a trauma response, right? And all of us interpret those incidents differently. Makes it hard to treat, doesn't it? What are the two types of trauma? The two types of primary, primary, which is direct, secondary, which is indirect, right? And where does that cycle begin? When little Johnny it receives trauma, brings it into our house, perpetuates it onto us, then we perpetuate it back into our environment, right? So the cycle repeats around and around and around. And what I am doing is saying, guys, we have got to stop the cycle. We have to stop the cycle. And I want to invite you, invite you to look below, get into the description on the video, click the link and book a strategy call with me today. It's free. There's no cost for the strategy call. And let's take a look at what we can do, not just to help Johnny, but to help the family, to help you exchange the chaos and the hurt and the fear and the pain and replace it with hope and peace, and love, and joy, all the things that you have always wanted for little Johnny, his siblings, and your household.